When it comes to memory training and mental fitness, it's hard to find games that are truly fun for the brain. After all, a lot of brain games require effort, time, and energy, and worse, a lot of them are locked up in annoying apps that actually defeat the whole purpose of improving your brain due to our collective need to get off the machines. It's really the only way to protect ourselves from the horrors of digital amnesia. So if we want to truly experience mental exercise, we need to plan and complete approximately four brain training sessions per week. Oddly enough, these are the same findings of the brain science experts who studied meditation for concentration and memory. And the good news is that there are plenty of fun, easy, and rewarding games that are truly fun. They exercise your spatial memory, autobiographical memory, episodic memory, and more. And I've got a suggested schedule for you that makes it fun and easy to get more than enough fun brain exercises into your life without breaking a sweat. Let's dive in. Hi there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where I help mature learners of every age take mental adventures using memory techniques. And our community helps make learning easy, effective, elegant, and fun. So hit that subscribe button now and enable notifications with the bell icon. That way you won't miss a thing, especially our live streams where you can hang out, ask questions, and meet the valuable members of the Magnetic Memory Method community. And while you're subscribing, and even if you're already subscribed, hit that thumbs up and let's go. So there are some exciting word games that ramp up your brain. I'm not talking about crossword puzzles here. The scientific evidence around getting brain exercise from them is not so clear. The exception is if you play them in a group, such as in the form of Scrabble. Likewise, you can play Hangman, and this word game sharpens your thinking skills as you anticipate the future based on guesswork and strategically seeking to fill in the blanks. Both Scrabble and Hangman are also visual games. Both stimulate your eyes and the visual parts of your brain, but you can play word games that don't involve a board or pen and paper. For example, Alphabet Cinema is a fun word game where the first player names a movie and the second player must name a movie using either the first or last letter offered by the first player. You can play this game with actors, songs, the names of paintings or painters, cars, or any subject or category you choose. You can also write poetry in a group by having each participant contribute a line that rhymes with the previous one. So for example, Peter says it's ice cold in Italy. Sally says, but not too cold to ski. Then James, I'll have to wait and see. And Bill finally says, maybe it's warm in Sicily. The goal is to keep going until a participant can no longer provide a line that rhymes. You can also play this game on your own, but in that case, it's usually called poetry. Now for a memory challenge similar to this game, each person not only provides a new line, but must repeat all the lines that went before. And in this version of the game, rhyming actually makes it easier because of how this feature of language makes words more memorable through pattern recognition. For more challenge, remove the rhyme component and just have each player add a new line after attempting to recall all the previous lines that have been entered. Now the second is combining coordination with memory. Now juggling is one of the most common brain exercises that uses the hands. It's fun and easy to learn if you break down the steps and use a process called deliberate practice. So to learn to juggle quickly, spend no more than five to 10 minutes practicing during any given session. Start by passing just one ball from hand to hand, then add a second ball and finally a third. And this is important. Never allow yourself to be frustrated. Just stop and take a break and come back to it later. You'll get it eventually and you'll benefit from enhanced perceptual and motor skills when you do. In fact, as scientists reported in a January 22nd, 2004 edition of Nature, juggling lights up visual areas of the brain. And another study published in the Oxford journal Age and Aging found that juggling helps adults between 30 to 59 years of age expand their capacity to learn new motor skills or improve existing ones. In my own experience, since learning to juggle, I have found this to be true. I now play even more complex music on guitar and bass than I used to tackle before, for example. Well, how to juggle? Step one, relax yourself and breathe deeply. Some experts suggest that you imagine the infinity symbol in front of you. Why? Because this symbol closely resembles the pattern you will make in front of you as you juggle. Step two, with your arms at your sides, hold your elbows close to your body. Then with your palms facing upward, gently toss a single ball. Toss it from one hand to the other. When you start moving the ball between your hands, try and have the top of the arc pass just a touch above eye level. Again, keep in mind the infinity symbol as you throw, even with just one ball. Step three, repeat the second step, but now with a ball in each hand. Throw the second ball just as the first reaches the top of the arc just above eye level. Throw and catch, catch and throw. Continue for as long as you can without getting bored or frustrated. Step four, 
add a third ball. Now, don't worry about catching the balls in the beginning, but focus on throwing. I suggest practicing over a table so you don't have to keep bending down to pick up the balls. Start with two balls in your right hand, one in your left or reverse this to find whichever is most comfortable. The hand with two balls throws first. Throw one ball to just above eye level, then do the same with the ball in the opposite hand. Then toss the second ball. Remember, don't worry about catching any balls to begin with. Just throwing the three balls to learn the proper height of the arc and see the infinity symbol in action is accomplishment enough. Repeat while making sure you never get frustrated and always take a break before that happens and then come back later. Step five, when you can confidently throw all three balls and create the infinity symbol, now add catching. Toss all three balls, catch all three. Work on rhythm and study the pattern. Soon you'll realize that you're juggling. Now to add an extra layer of complexity, try reciting a poem from memory, sing, or even recite the alphabet backwards. Carturagnia, praputae phalum, karma kimperum, karma tajadum, kritima hodado, patina karanam, phalamashashvatam, gati di rodhakam. For some more examples of this, check out the back and forth Christian Fitzharris and I had in a couple of videos and discussions by visiting the links below. Since he's an accomplished actor with a really sharp brain, I think you'll find them informative and inspiring. Now let's talk about strategy games. Did you know that playing games like chess activate both the right and left side of your brain? Now, although scientists don't all agree on exactly how chess exercises the brain, it seems clear that chess helps people develop better decision-making skills. And as with juggling, there may be some ways in which playing strategy games helps people develop other related skills. So Dr. Chandra Malaka Basak made this observation in a series of scientific papers, but you can watch her discuss the cognitive benefits of chess in a video I've linked to in the description below. Now, what I find most fascinating is how all of these fun games for the brain potentially help preserve our memory. For example, we know that there are physical networks in our brain that need to be used if they are to remain healthy. There's a relationship between the health of our thoughts and the health of all our layers of memory. And playing these games work different layers to different degrees, which means that you ultimately want to focus on a variety of fun activities for your brain. For example, you can play word games on Monday, chess on Wednesday, and juggle every day, rotating, reciting the alphabet backwards with reciting poetry and singing while juggling every other day. The important thing is this, something is better than nothing. Don't put these ideas away and treat them like data for later. Dive in, explore with consistency over time and reap the benefits. What benefits? Great focus, mental clarity, and better memory. And what are those improvements useful for? Well, being more present, learning faster, knocking projects like learning a language off your bucket list, and being more successful and confident socially because you can do simple things like remembering everyone's name. And I do mean everyone's name. For that outcome, you're gonna wanna play the ultimate brain game, however, and it's called a memory palace. This game has some particular rules, and I'll teach you these rules and show you how to create well-formed memory palaces with some simple worksheets that help you unpack your autobiographical memory so you have dozens of memory palaces. Just head on over to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT, and in this memory kit, you'll get four free videos and three eBooks that walk you through everything so that you can speak any language fluently, recall complicated formulas, math equations, or numbers, master the technical terms of your field of work or study. I'm talking about medicine, and pharmacy, physics, chemistry, IT, geology, history, you name it. You can recite poetry, jokes, and even long speeches word for word with zero mistakes and quickly absorb the most important ideas from books, textbooks, or lectures and be able to recall it all perfectly months later. And of course, never forget a name or face a game, even if it's a complex name from a different language. And remember what you talked about even years later. All right, I'm gonna go scratch my itch for juggling with some more Sanskrit recitation and get ready for the next video I'm creating for you here in the Magnetic Mary Method headquarters. So thanks for the thumbs up, all your comments, and for sharing this video. And if you're still not subscribed, go ahead and take care of that now before you forget.